We have a big old cup of tea today because we are talking about all things sobriety. I've been sober for a year and four months now. I think, oh my goodness, what day is it? Maybe it's my anniversary. No, it's not, it's two days after. So I'm a year, four months and two days sober. When I did my sobriety video six months ago, I got a lot of questions that were more like looking for advice that weren't necessarily to do with me. And so I said I would do a follow up episode. Is this an episode? I don't know. And I think the time has come. I haven't been drinking for a while now, so hopefully I can help you with some of your dilemmas. A little disclaimer, I'm sharing from my personal experience. I'm no expert, I'll just be using my experience to share some advice. And I'll leave some resources down below as well where you can get further advice. And obviously I'm leaving people anonymous, but I'm gonna try and cover like the most asked. The first question, very juicy. How do you deal with your partner drinking? This one is a bit more about me actually, it's not so much of an advice. But yeah, Jack, my boyfriend, still drinks and it's actually been really fine. I will say there was probably like a teething period of like six to nine months of just working out where we were at in terms of boundaries because neither of us have done this before. Now everything is pretty smooth. I think by osmosis, Jack has ended up drinking a lot less than he used to. I think we worked out he probably drinks about half of what he used to. And most of that is because I now don't drink. So for example, for me personally, I don't like having wine open in the fridge. I find that really difficult. So Jack doesn't drink wine in the house. And then by extension, he only really has an occasional beer in the house. He has a few things of nice whiskey. So maybe he'll have some whiskey but it's not the cracking open and sharing a bottle of wine every night like we were doing, especially in the pandemic. In general, it's really improved our relationship to have me not drinking. I am just better to be around. There are fewer arguments, fewer anxious moments, fewer tears from me. And I think there's this like shared solidarity that Jack supports me in my journey and that builds this foundation of trust and just builds an even stronger relationship because we're experiencing something together that is like a bit challenging and we're navigating it as a team. However, I have been very lucky. I have sober friends who have had breakups because their partners haven't been as understanding or they've realized that their partner maybe also has a problem, you know, as they've got sober, their partner has struggled a lot with that experience. So it can shine a spotlight on issues that need to be resolved, as well as highlighting the things that are working well. Cool, we really got into the meat and potatoes. Okay, these two can kind of go together. The first is how do you deal with people being annoying when they're drunk? And the second is, do you have any tips for navigating events where everyone is drinking, such as weddings? Oh my goodness, I've yet to do my first sober wedding. That's coming up this summer. I have been out a lot and I've been in environments where the expectation is that you drink a lot. And for me, I haven't always found them easy, but the number one thing that I need in order to feel okay, like in those environments, is an out. I need to be able to French exit. When I quit drinking, I realized that alcohol gives you this stamina that I didn't think it was giving you. People say, oh, it puts you to sleep, da 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 da. No, it does not. It gives you this social stamina like nothing else. And after like three or four hours, I need to go home or I need to be able to retreat somewhere. That might be a hotel room, a bedroom, just somewhere that is private, my own space. I will plan beforehand to make sure I have that kind of space. So yeah, I don't let myself get caught up in the expectations of what people want from me. I give my all while I'm there. And then as soon as I feel that I need to recharge, I really try and do that. Even if that means retreating, taking half an hour and then coming back in. But yeah, for me, that's been the number one thing, ensuring that I have mental and physical space. In terms of dealing with drunk, annoying people, Again, exceptionally lucky. Most of my friends are not drunk and annoying. I was the mainly drunk and annoying one. I think the best thing is like reframing it and trying to see it as funny and trying to see it as endearing or trying to empathize. Put yourself in their shoes because you were probably like that when you were a drinker as well. And that you're kind of paying back time, you know? So yeah, where I'm lacking that empathy, I try and put myself in their shoes. And that in turn makes me more willing to help out. But if I notice that they're always the drunk and annoying one. I will probably just spend less time with them. There are some friends who I love dearly, but I pretty much only see for dinners and coffees. Someone said, for me, drinking is a way of letting go and getting out of my head. How can I replace that? I worried about this so much when I got sober and I really feel for you because I just relate so much. Like I needed to drink to relax. I was like, a tire pumped full of air and I just could not let the air out other than through drinking. I wish someone had told me that after a few months, that feeling really does stop. For like 90 to 120 days, I was nuts. I just felt really on edge the whole time, but it really lessened to the point where I didn't need an outlet. But obviously sometimes you do need an outlet. Like even when you're the most level yogi, level-headed person, sometimes you really, 
do need to just let loose. So the things that I found that do help are a creative outlet, that's the main thing for me. Sometimes I just need to have a cigarette and a Diet Coke. <laughs> If I'm being entirely honest, I am not a frequent smoker, but I do sometimes smoke. My life and my work can blur, so I have to remember to make active efforts to have decompressing moments. I will put money into it, like I'll pay for a massage. Some people pay for facials, pay to get their nails done. It's a space where they're forced to not do anything for a bit of time, but also you get that like, mm, I'm having a little treat kind of moment. So yeah, that's one thing I actually tried right at the beginning was I booked myself like a full spa day. Just, I had such a desperate need to relax. Oh, another one's exercise, of course. Booking a really good dinner with friends, that really helps me, or a really good coffee where you're just like having one of those conversations that feels like it could go on forever. Like it feels so engaging and so real. I remember reading in Holly Whitaker's book, oh, like sometimes I just get a release from a good cup of tea and I could have smacked her around the face. I was like, I will never be someone who relaxes with a cup of tea. I want to go out till four, but actually your body does adapt. And so it's not an intentional thing. Sometimes you can make a cup of tea and it will just decompress you. Sometimes you can put on your slippers and it will just, oh, get yourself cuddly in a little blanket. Oh, so good. And it actually does have that effect of having that glass of wine. How can I deal with the feeling that I'm not having as much fun as others? So I'm coming at this from the perspective of someone who had to quit drinking. I know people are like, oh, it's a choice, it's a choice. But like the choice was living a really difficult life or quitting drinking. And sometimes this really does affect me. I will sit in a room full of people and feel so left out, but it's all in my head. No one else thinks that I'm weird. It's just me sitting there not having fun. No one else is not having fun because I'm there. It doesn't affect anyone else that I'm not drinking. It really, really doesn't. But I will big it up and make it this whole thing in my head. So the key things for me are working out why I'm not having fun and what is it that's making me feel left out? Because ultimately it's a feeling of social isolation, I think, that causes that sensation. And it's worth saying, I found this really, really hard. Like even recently. And then if it's bringing you towards drinking or making you think, oh, I should just drink, Talk yourself through what that night would look like if you did drink. Because for me, the first hour would be lovely. Don't get me wrong, it'd be nice. But then I'd have another one and another one and another one. I keep drinking until the morning because I haven't drunk in so long. I'm probably sick. I wake up in the morning with a hangover. I start crying. I'm so socially anxious. I can't remember what I did, what I said, because at some point I will black out. I always black out. So it wouldn't be worth it. Try not to let it get to you and push through and see how it goes. How do I get over the embarrassing slash hurtful things I did when drunk? Ooh, this is a good one. I kind of made a video about this a few years ago and sometimes people ask me to make a follow-up and I'm like, there's nothing left to say. I kind of covered it. But yeah, so you messed up. I did a lot of dumb stuff when I was drinking and I hurt a few people when I was drinking. But I think the main thing you can do is just own it, apologize and move on because you don't benefit from stewing in it. They don't benefit from you stewing in it. The best thing you can do is just live differently, change your behavior. The other thing I just mentioned is that you might think you've done the worst thing in the world. People are very private about things that they believe are mistakes. Some people will take things that they did when they were drinking to the grave or just things they did stone cold sober. So please don't take this as meaning you're the worst person in the world. I used to do this to myself all the time. I'd berate myself. I would make myself so small and it destroyed my self-esteem. But you've got to remember that there is a whole world of 7 billion people People have done some shitty stuff and people in your life have done some shitty stuff. They just probably haven't told you. So try not to take what you've done and turn it in on yourself and use it as ammunition against yourself. Just try and be a better person for next time. How to deal with people asking you why you don't drink. Do you know what? I'm quite honest, as anyone who's met me in the past year will tell you. But at the beginning, I had people in my life who would say, but you weren't that bad. You know, and that is part of being vulnerable is when I share why I don't drink, sometimes I get feedback that I don't resonate with and isn't something that I wanted to hear and also isn't something that's true from my experience. You have to remind yourself that you're the only person who saw every part of that experience. You're the only person who woke up with you every morning, who went to bed with you every night. You know what? made you quit drinking and they don't and how nice that they didn't experience that version of you that made you want to quit if you've quit because of a health concern or even just you were done you just didn't want to drink anymore the main thing for all of the reasons you might have quit drinking is that this is an education in self-advocacy. If anything this exercise is going to improve your self-confidence by a mile because you have to stand your ground 
over and over again. You have to be boundaried over and over again. And it's so good for you in your soul, even though it sucks to do. It reaffirms that you're doing this for you and no one else. So you don't have to tell anyone if you don't want to, you can just say, oh, I just didn't like drinking. I just wasn't enjoying it very much. Ultimately, the only person that needs to be okay with your decision to not drink is you. Do you think that not drinking but still smoking weed is technically sober? No, but I also think if that's what's working for you and making your life better, then I'm totally on board with it. For me personally, I prefer to only use the word sober to refer to not doing anything, just in terms of not recreationally taking alcohol or drugs. Whatever works, honestly, whatever works, but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily use the term sober. How do you deal with not drinking affecting your friendships? It depends in what ways, because quitting drinking can affect your friendships in loads of different ways. I know some people who just stop seeing a lot of their friends because their friends were really heavy drinkers. For me, the best things that I've done to maintain my friendships is to make sure I'm meeting up with people in a low or no alcohol capacity, which does not mean going to sober bars, which you know, totally respect if that's your thing, but absolutely cringes me out. I did not quit drinking to not be a fully participating person in society. But yeah, making sure that those social occasions happen in those environments. Oh my God, going for brunch. There's so many things that we do that don't explicitly involve drinking. So the main thing for my friendships was just shifting away from those environments and moving towards, as I said, food-based environments and coffees. And like sleepovers, I'm all about bringing back the adult sleepover now. I think in terms of mentality, the best thing you can think about friendships is not to worry. I was so, so scared of my friendships changing when I got sober. All that's happened is that the majority of my friendships have stayed the same. The ones that were very alcohol related or the people themselves were very involved in alcohol or drugs have calmed down a bit. And I thought some of those friendship changes would be really painful, but they've actually been fine because they happened very slowly. I thought it would be this big cut off point where I was like, I can't see you anymore. No, it's nothing like that. By the time I'm making those changes, it's because I wanted to and I felt okay with them. So don't be afraid and don't think that it's this big sudden change all at once, all your relationships are gonna look different. It's not like that. And the best thing you can do is just not worry about it. If those changes are gonna happen, they'll happen supernaturally. Do you have any advice for navigating dating while not drinking? <laughs> do I? I actually did my first sober stint while I was single. The mems, the mems. I should really have asked some friends who are single. Maybe I will insert some voice notes from friends who are single and sober with some dating advice. So I actually, one of the reasons I avoided getting sober for so long was because I thought I would never meet anyone. Um, I was single at the time and I just thought, yeah, I'm, I'm never gonna ever find anyone if I'm sober because how the hell am I gonna ever date? Wouldn't know how to even prepare myself for a a date or go and face someone I didn't know. No one's gonna like me if I'm sober, because that's boring and weird and etc. And like what I found is like actually that dating sober is so much better than um dating when you're getting drunk, you know, not remembering things and saying things you don't want to say and that sort of thing. So actually you're so much more in control when you're dating sober. One thing to say in terms of like worrying what people think is that ultimately the right person and someone that's actually a nice person but also probably the right person for you will not care if you're sober and actually I think when you're sober you think that it's this really big deal but actually a lot of people just are not phased by it on one hand it doesn't have to be your identity like you don't have to tell them straight away that you're sober but I think I did find it helpful to kind of tell them quite early on and I think just making it clear that you don't drink I used to kind of surprise people with it on dates and I don't actually think that was the right thing to do <laughs> but also like do what you want like it never bothered anyone so I'm sitting there with all my hindsight like hmm, maybe that wasn't cool but no one ever acted bothered at all I'm sorry I'm not the right person for dating advice the final question I have is what's the most helpful thing a friend has done for you in the early days of going sober loads of friends didn't drink around me at the beginning which was really sweet of them and definitely not necessary but was really appreciated. And also, oh my goodness, friends were so patient with hearing me talk about sobriety all the time, but it was my whole life for at least six months because I was just adjusting to what was a huge lifestyle change for me. Like it literally turned my world upside down. So the people who would listen and hear me out are chatting all this shit about my new sober life and like all the weird things that were happening and the, the things I was learning, like, the people who had patience for that, our relationships have been so strong since then, so thank you. Know that all the sober conversation is not gonna last forever. I've been really lucky 
my friendships are vastly the same. I think that's it. Finally, finally, I got asked a lot about the best non-alcoholic drinks and alternatives. I actually wrote a whole blog post on this, which I will link below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like. Please give me a subscribe if you are new around here and hit the bell notification if you would like to be notified of when I make new videos. And thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. I host my website with Squarespace. I love it dearly. Building my site was the easiest thing. Squarespace has some great templates which you can build your site from and you can personalize them to make them look exactly how you want. And Squarespace also has loads of features that help you build the site that you need. For example, they've got a blog feature which I use. That's where I posted about my favorite non-alcoholic drinks. And you can also set up a store on Squarespace which is something I have done where I sell my Lightroom presets. I also have a Notion template of my amazing to-do list and I can't tell you how many more features there are. You can really build exactly what you need. You can upload video tutorials behind a paywall like it's really clever technology they have a great analytics suite they have seo tools it's honestly so good anyway once you've built your site you can get 10 percent off your first site or domain by using the code lucy moon at checkout or going to squarespace.com forward slash lucy moon so take this as a sign to go ahead and launch that site that you've been thinking about building, that idea you've been sitting on, make it a reality today. Over here, I will leave a button where you can subscribe. And over here, I will leave a lovely video for you to watch. Woohoo, life is so exciting.